Good evening. Today we're going to do our evening prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, 1928. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense, and the lifting up of my hands will be your sacrifice. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be only acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thanks be to God, which given us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. We will say this together. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, let us only. Almighty and the most merciful Father, we have heard the straight from the ways that God sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done. And we have done those things which you ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. We serve all offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess the faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to the promises declared on the land and in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter be abundantly righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy own name, living you. Living you. I will announce that to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of all their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us for repentance in his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the, at the last we may come to his birth of joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, may thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, you open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth the praise of us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, Lord, be love him. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praise. Let us pray our Psalter, Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant in a song of praises be. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. Verse Peter means the number of the stars he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord gives up the humble, he cast the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord, he thanks to him. Make melody to our God and the liar. He covers the heavens with clouds, he prepares rain for the earth, he makes grass grow in the hills. He gives to the beast their food, and to the young maidens their pride. His delight is not in the sweat of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of their man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, and those who hope in his steadfast life. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of the gates. He blesses her children in you. He makes peace in your borders. He heals you with the finest of the wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs through He gives no like wool. He, cut, he scatters cross like ashes. He hurls down his crystals of ice like drops. He can stand before his stone. He sets out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters blow. He declares his word to be filled. He stages and girls to Israel. He has in wealth thus with you in other nation. We don't know his rules. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy, Holy Ghost. 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the glory of Jesus. Glory be to God on high, and on earth is good will towards men. Be praised thee, be blessed thee, be worship thee. Come, be glorified thee, be given praise to thee for thy glory. O Lord God. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 1 to 10. Verse 1, Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For there shall no more come into you. Be uncircumcised and not complete. Verse 2, Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Be seated, O Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive, daughter of Zion. Verse 3, for thus says the Lord, you are sold for nothing, you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down and first into Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. Now therefore, what have I have here, declares the Lord, seeing that many people are taken away for nothing? Their rulers wail, declares the Lord, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, in that day they shall know that it is I who speak, here I am. How beautiful upon the mountains, and the feet of him who brings the good news, who publishes peace, who brings goodness of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of her watchmen, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has confronted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. Verse 10 The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the end of the reading of the first Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10. Thanks be to God. My soul will magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for he will from henceforth all generations shall all be blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is in them that fear him to all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud with the imagination of their hearts. He hath pulled down the mighty from their seat, and exalted the humble man. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath set empty away. He remembering his mercy, a hope in the servant of Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed, forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, will be done, and Amen. Let us be seated for our second lesson. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the three, was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it on my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus answered him. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of, of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. Here is the reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all stand and pray the Nangamitis. Lord, now let us now thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to light the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people in Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us be seated for our sermon. Our sermon text is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. I will read the text. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ, and be found in him that having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained, not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing is for sure. Uh, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straightening straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the right goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold to what is true, hold true to what is or what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you, and now, of, and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their devil, and their glory in their shame. With mindset on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transfer our lowly body to be like His glorious body, with a power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. So today we are sermon. So today we are still in the uh, celebration of Easter, even though uh, we might assume that that Lord's Day is a celebration or anticipation of the Lord's coming or the Lord's resurrection. But now we have here uh, from our lessons uh, regarding uh, the resurrection of Christ. Paul says in verse ten in the chapter 3 of Philippians, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection, and may share His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So the context of this chapter is that Paul is counting rubbish, is counting loss, everything that he has gained, like from being a Pharisee, being someone who is in the highest council of the Jews, being someone from the, from the tribe of Benjamin, he has a lot of things to boast about if people will be basing their righteousness from the works of the law. But Paul said that he counted all of these things as rubbish in verse 7. 
But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. In verse 8, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. So it means that Paul is saying that whatever gain he had from the law, whatever things he had gained from it, he counted as nothing. Because of what? Because of surpassing worth of knowing Christ his Lord. As Christians, sometimes we think that the, the knowledge of Christ is very unimportant, or it's just a little thing for us. But for Paul, Paul is saying that it encompasses everything. The knowledge of Christ, knowing Christ as his Lord, he counted everything as rubbish. He counted them as nothing. For his sake, he said, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as nothing. Count them as rubbish. Count them as dumb. He treated it as if nothing in order that he may gain Christ. What are we doing in order to gain Christ? Are we doing these things like Paul? Like he counted everything as dumb? He counted everything as rubbish just to gain Christ. Paul has the comfort of a good life in being a Jewish leader, being a sanity in himself. But Paul has counted this as nothing because he knew Christ. Brothers and sisters, whoever listening to me this, this evening, our, our challenge is we should imitate Paul, imitate him in his faith. Do we count things as rubbish for Christ? Or do we treat them as important than Christ? Do we treat our work, our life, our family, our relationship as idols, as something that we can replace Christ for? No. We should not be. We should not be brothers. We should press on toward an upward call, as Paul said in the same chapter. In verse 14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Do we do, we do that? This is a challenge for us, even especially in our time right now, that there are a lot of people who is compromising their faith in Christ because of their relationship, because of the things that can pass away. It means that you do not know Christ. You do not know Him yet. Because if Christ is everything for you, you will count everything as rubbish. You will count everything as useless and dumb because you know Christ. And knowing Christ will surpass anything from this world. It surpasses. The knowing our Lord surpasses everything. Because everything in this world will pass away. But the Lord will remain forever. And also Paul said in verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and may share His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. What is the power of His resurrection? The power to be freed from sin. The power to be freed from the fear of death. From the power to be freed from the tyranny of Satan. Is that our goal? Is that that we want to do? To know Him and the power of His resurrection? How do we have that? The power of His resurrection. Dear brother, we have died with Christ. And we have been raised in Christ in baptism. That in our baptism, we have shared in His life, death, and resurrection. That Christ's righteousness is our own righteousness. That our, His Christ's death is our own death. And that Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. That is our comfort dear brothers and dear sisters. The power of Christ's resurrection and that our sufferings are conformed to the suffering of Christ. That our suffering is not any more that is useless or rubbish or anything that is not connected or like the brother, our sufferings have been redeemed by Christ. Everything that we suffer in this world is nothing worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us in the last week. But everything we suffer in this world, it's nothing comparing to the glory that will be, will be revealed to us in the resurrection. 
the five of your brothers and sisters. We must press on. We must focus and set our minds on Christ. Set our eyes, fix our eyes on Jesus and on His death and resurrection. That we count things as rubbish because of Christ. Because Christ already did all of these things for us. Our salvation, our election, our sanctification, our righteousness, all of these things have been obtained for us already in Christ. And what, what can we lose? What can we lose if we believe in Christ? The world, the flesh, the surpassing glory of this world, the vain offerings of the pleasures of the flesh, all of these things will get pass away. But knowing Christ, it will never pass away. Dear brothers, let us be brought with Paul in verse 17. Brothers, join in imitating me. Keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Join in imitating Paul. No wonder this church is named after Paul. St. Paul's Reformed Church. But yeah, we should imitate Paul. Imitate his example of following Christ, of knowing Christ and his power, the power of his death and resurrection. And that's with your brothers, I exhort you. As Paul said in verse 20, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body with the power that enables him to be to subject all things to himself. Our citizenship is in heaven. Isn't that something that we should think of? Our citizenship is not here on earth. It's in heaven, where God dwells. The heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable angels, the place where there's no death, there's no sin, and there's no condemnation. That's our comfort as Christians. Our citizenship is in heaven, not on earth. Not on these things that pass away, not on these things that are corrupted, but in heaven. And from it, Paul says, we await a Savior. We await someone who will save us from this body that is corrupting. From this life full of misery. Who is the Savior? The Lord Jesus Christ. And what will he do when he comes again? Paul said, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body? Just as Christ has been raised from the dead and dieth no more, we will be like his. They will be like his body that died no more. That is not subject to corruption anymore. But has been redeemed from death. That is our comfort, dear brothers and sisters. That by the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead, we will also be transformed by him from our lowly body to be like his glorious body. This is our hope. The hope of resurrection. Because in the resurrection, the truth of this Christianity hinges upon. Because if we have a God who doesn't raise anyone from the dead, He's impotent. Because His creatures are suffering in death. They die and do not go back. But this God, He became man, He died and came back again. This God can redeem from death. This God can redeem us from our misery. Because He proved it in Christ. That God can raise dead people. They may be spiritually dead or physically dead. Either way, God, for God, it's important that we will be raised from death. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save us thee, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Do thy ministers of righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make me our hearts of us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through my only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has overtaken death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee that, as by his pleasure we grace preventing us, thou dost put into our minds with desires, so by the complete of help we may bring the same to the effect. We are saying, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who live in the benefit of the Holy Ghost ever, but God, work without them. Amen. O God, from whom the holy desires, all good counsels, and all of us to proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the Lord can give, that our hearts to be set to be thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and thy divine mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us prepare ourselves for the Lord's supper. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, for the sins of the whole world, and it institute in his holy gospel command us. To, have, to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us leave. We do not presume to come to this day evil, a merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. For it hath worked thee so much to the gathering of the promise under the people, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, a gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. That our sinful bodies may be redeemed by His body, and our souls washed in His most precious blood, that we may ever more dwell in Him and He in us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Dear brother, the table of our Lord Jesus Christ is now prepared. Take this as a remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Take it. 
This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. Take drink. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. In the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the life everlasting. You may never part in peace. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost fellowship us, to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members of incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is a blessed company of all faithful people, and also our heirs through hope of our everlasting kingdom, with the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech you, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. For the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his spacious eye upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look down upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.